the Gospel of St. Luke. You have your Bibles, your Bible apps, St. Luke, the 24th chapter, St. Luke 24, and we will commence reading at verse 36, amen, Luke 24, beginning with verse 36. Amen. You have it, say amen. 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 And we're going to read from the New International Version of the Gospel. Luke 24, verse 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost come on, come on. does not have flesh and bones right. <laughs> as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And then verse 41 a reads, and while they did not, and while they, they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything there to eat? Wow. Amen. Amen. That is God's word. We are going to hold those Bibles up. You know how we do it at the time. Amen. This is God's word. This is God's word. I receive it. I receive it. I believe it. I believe it. I decree it. I decree it. God's word. God's word. A lamp unto my feet. A lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. And a light unto my path. This is a church. This is a church. Where everybody is somebody. Where everybody is somebody. And Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is Lord. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. One sign. One sign. In Jesus. God's presence. Amen. And for just a few minutes today, I want to challenge you with this question. In this post-resurrection um, era that we are still in, as you know, last Sunday was Easter, and we are in that resurrection spirit. Amen. So in light of that, I want to just challenge you with this question for just a few minutes today. Are we suffering from the side effects of our post-resurrection power? Are we suffering from the side effects of our post Resurrection power. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because we know that Jesus has been resurrected from the dead. We know that he is risen. And Zion, the fact of this resurrection, the fact of this of this this risen Christ demands that we focus our faith forward. Amen? It demands of us that we move forward in Jesus' name because he is risen, he is no longer dead, the tomb is empty. Amen? So, so are, we, are, we, are we suffering from the side effects. You know what, what a side effect is, don't you? Amen. You know that sometimes, uh, you know that a side effect is usually a secondary, uh, typically undesirable effect, usually associated with a drug, such as an aspirin. Amen? Amen. 
Sometimes you can take medication for one thing, but it produces the opposite. Yeah. Amen? So we want to apply that in a spiritual sense and suggest and surmise theologically that it's possible that we as a body of baptized believers and each of us individually it's possible that we may be suffering from the side effects of our post-resurrection power. Well, let me break, let me, let me unpack that for you. You may say, well, Reverend, what do you mean the side effects of our post-resurrection power? And I'm glad you asked. Are you one of those people who has had a breakthrough, but the breakthrough hasn't broken through. Let me ask that again. Are you one of those people who has had a breakthrough? You've been waiting on a breakthrough, but the breakthrough hasn't broken through. Well, guess what? You are not alone. Because in this scripture, in this text, are Jesus' closest confidants, his disciples, and those who are the most closest to Jesus Christ, who are sitting in the post-resurrection day and time. Jesus has been resurrected from the dead. He has risen from the dead. But, but, but the breakthrough of the resurrection has yet to really break through to these people. I say, I, say, I say that the breakthrough of the resurrection, the fact that Jesus Christ is risen, it, 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 it chronicles the fact that he was buried in, in, in chapter 23. Luke records that he was buried in verse uh, 50, and then he goes on into verse, I'm sorry, chapter 24, and he talks about how the women uh, came to the tomb, and they had rolled away the stone, and they, they, they discovered that Jesus was no longer in the tomb. He had been resurrected, and it was risen from the dead, but the breakthrough of the resurrection has yet to break through in their own lives. My brothers and sisters, dare I say, dare I say that there is somebody sitting here today that, 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 that the reality and the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ has yet to break through in your own understanding. Well, why do you say that, Richard? Because somebody sitting here today, you've had a success. You have experienced a, a grand achievement. Have you ever been there? But you just don't feel like you're in a celebrated mood. Have you ever achieved something or had, had experienced some kind of, of, of resounding success that you've been waiting on for quite some time? And, and when it happens, it just doesn't feel like it ever happened. Yes, uh, have, you ever been, have you ever been there? Yes, Lord. It, 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 have, you, have you ever felt like that life has, 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 that you're suffering from what we call buyer's remorse? <laughs> yeah, buyer's remorse. Remorse. Well, look at these. Look at this text, and, and you might identify with these with these disciples and Jesus' closest confidants because the text shows us a band of people, a band of disciples, and Jesus' closest confidants who were who were who were sitting in fear. There was a sense of fear and trepidation. There was a sense uh, of 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 of. of of fear and anxiety. Christ has been crucified and resurrected. The Jewish leaders are involved in a cover-up and a demagoguery campaign. The, 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 the disciples are in hiding for fear of their lives. In fact, the religious leaders have put out what we call a bolo for the disciples. They be on the lookout. They were, they, were, they were trying to arrest them and, and bring them 
to justice. So there was a, a, a sense of fear, change, and uncertainty. The religious leaders were, they were, they were, does this sound familiar? The religious leaders were denying collusion with the, with the crucifixion and obstruction with the resurrection. They, they had put out this rumor that, that the body of Jesus Christ had actually been stolen. So they, they were they were they were involved in a cover-up. And, 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 and so the disciples and those closest to Jesus, they, they were they were sitting behind locked doors. They were afraid. They didn't leave their home because they feared that they would be arrested. And, 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 and so, so, so the resurrection had already happened, but here were these disciples behind closed doors in fear. The resurrection had happened. But here they were, afraid to go outside at night. Have you ever been there? It should have been a time of great joy. It should have been a time of great celebration. It, it should have been a time of great uh, 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 anticipation. But if you look at what these disciples were experiencing, Luke gives us a, chrono, a, a chronological testament of their emotions. It, it, it should have been a time where they were they were joyful, where they were they were they were looking to the light. They were. They were, it should have been a time when they were, they were celebrating the cause, the celebration, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But look what Luke records throughout this entire 24th chapter. Look at verse 5. He says, they were sitting in their fright. Look at verse 11. But they did not believe. In verse 11. Then look at verse 12. They were wondering to himself what had happened. Look at verse 14. They were talking with each other about what had happened. Verse 17, they stood still, and look at that, faces downcast. Verse 21, we had hoped, we had hoped, we had hope past tense. Look at verse 36, while they were still talking about this, and then verse 37, they were startled and frightened. Folks, the resurrection had happened, which should have been, which should have been a time of celebration, was, was actually a time of dejection, a time of fear, a time of self-doubt, a time of wondering what had happened. They were suffering from the side effects of their post-resurrection power. My question to you today's eye is, are we doing the same? Are we suffering from, from the side effects of our post-resurrection power? You see, we are believers in the resurrection, but the question is, does the resurrection live in us, or are we suffering from what I call chronological trauma? Well, you, you ask, well, what is chron chronological trauma? I'm glad you asked. Chronological trauma is, is is it has to do with neuroscience, but but technically it's when 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 you're in when you find yourself in a rough spot, when you find yourself in a challenging situation, the brain will take your personal circumstances and go back in time. It'll push you back. You remember the other day? You remember when when the Israelites. Uh, were, were delivered by God from Egypt and they got out into the wilderness and, and, and they, they ran into tough times, ran into hard times and what did they do? They started asking the question or saying, they started saying, we would have been better off in Egypt than where we are now. The brain pushes you back in time. It pushes you back to where you used to be. It pushes you back to, to the place that you used to be. But it is then that we must allow our faith to pull us forward. We got to allow faith to pull us forward. We got to allow faith to pull us forward. And that's why Paul writes that I forget those things which are behind me and 
I press on toward the mark. I press on. I press on. Is there anybody here today who, who, who is ready to press on? In Jesus' name. Yes, yes, you've had a tough, a tough year. Yes, you've had a tough life this year. Things have not gone your way uh, in, in terms of your finances, in terms of your job, in terms of your family. But are you ready to press home and live in the power of your resurrection belief? We have a resurrection belief. We have a resurrection faith. We can't be like these disciples. We can't, we can't miss out on the power of the resurrection. We must understand that Jesus lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Are you ready? to move forward. All right. What you must understand, my brothers and sisters, if I prepare to close, is this, is this that, that, that what I call the liberating hermeneutical principle of this text is simple, that we have resurrection power, and because of this resurrection power, let's be about it. All right. All right. All right. Let's not just talk about it. They were, in verse 36, they were still talking about this. They were still talking about it. They were still debating. They were still talking. They were still caught up in the paralysis of analysis. They were still caught up in the problem and not in the solution. Forget about talking about it. Let's be about it. All right, all right. It's time to be about it. It's time to be about it. It's time to be about it. Are you still talking about going back to school and finishing that degree? It's time to be about it. Are you still just talking about writing that book? It's time to be about it. Are you still just talking about launching that, that nonprofit for community change? It's time to be about it. Are we still talking about saving souls? It's time to be about it. Are we still talking about increasing our membership? It's time to be about it. Are we still talking about going out into the community? It's time to be about it. Resurrection faith, that is resurrection living, that is living in the reality of our resurrection belief. It's time to be about it. It's time to be about it. It's time to shake off all of the obstacles that have kept us down and kept us from moving forward because Jesus, because God is getting ready to do a new thing, God. Do you not hear him in Isaiah 43 and 19? He says to the prophet, see, I am doing a new thing. Do you not see it? Yes, Lord. Do you not see it? And then he says, and, 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 and Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Yeah. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Right. What, are, what, are, what are we saying here? What are we saying? That it's time to be about it. It's time to stand up. It's time to move in faith. It is time to do what the Lord has charged us to do. Yeah. Not only collectively as a community of faith, but also in your personal life. It's time for you to shake off your slumber. Break out of your slumber. Break out of your fear. Break out of your wrong thinking. Break out of your self-imposed limitations. And celebrate All right. That's it. what great things God is doing and has done yes, in your life. Yes, right. But don't, don't sit around. Don't sit around behind closed doors. The closed doors of fear. The closed doors of faithlessness. Don't sit behind those doors and do nothing. Don't sit behind those doors and cower because the reality is beyond those doors, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a reality. Right. In your life, he is a reality. Yeah. So what is that saying? What, are, what, are, what is your life saying about the resurrection? What, are, what is that saying? It's saying that with positive change on the horizon and that, and, and, that, and that with you being on the verge of a breakthrough, 
it, it says that you must stand up and believe in yourself more than you have ever done before because you have a power within you. All right. A power of resurrection. Yeah. And with that power, we can change lives. With that power, we can change this community. With that power, we can make sure that our young people can go to college. With that power, we can make sure that our senior saints are cared for. With that power, we can minister to our millennials. With that power. That's it. But do you realize that you have power? All right, all right. That's really the question. Do we realize how powerful we are? How powerful we are. This, this verse, this scripture tells us that we are powerful beyond measure. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't just talk about it. Mm. We gotta be about it. Yeah, it Stand up and shake off <laughs> the side effects of fear. All right. The side effects of negative thinking. Yeah, the side effects of wrong thinking. The side effects of, of, of division and anxiety and, and, and strife among God's people. Shake it off! All right, all right. That's good. That's good. You remember that story I told you about the old goat, right? All right. He fell into the pit and the farmer saw him and didn't want to go through the expenses of getting the pit, the goat out of the pit, so he took a shovel and he, he started shoveling dirt on the goat in the pit. But that old goat wasn't ready to give up. All right. He had other ideas. Yes, yes, yes. Every time the former would, 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 would shovel some, some, some dirt down on the goat in the pit, the goat would just shake it off. Shake it off. And then he stumbled under his feet. And the former kept throwing the dirt, but the goat kept shaking it off. You gotta be like that old goat. You gotta learn how to shake it off. All right, all right. All right. Cause life will yes. throw some dirt on you. Yes. All right now. Life got some shovels, yeah. and those shovels got some dirt on them. All right, all right. It'll throw some dirt on your finances. Yeah. Yeah. It'll throw some dirt on your relationships. It throws some dirt on you when your friends let you down. But guess what? You got power to shake it off. And shove it under your feet. And I tell you what, that dirt kept on shaking it off. And every time he was stumping under his feet, he got higher.
accept the peace of Christ. In whatever situation that you may find yourself, accept the peace, the power, and the presence of Jesus Christ. Those were my three points, but I didn't get around to it. It's okay. The peace, the power, and the presence of Jesus Christ. That's how you overcome the side effects of your post-resurrection power. We got power. We got power in Jesus' name.